Welcome back to the community, everybody, and thank you all for being part of it. I really appreciate it. If you would like, go to the website that's coming up the screen. You can make a donation, buy stickers or t-shirts to help support the channel. Today, we're going to go ahead and do a whole beam assembly. Uh, I have a brand new beam here. I believe it could be a Brazilian. Uh, and we're going to go from scratch and assemble it all together. This will be a stock assembly with stock drum brakes and stock spindles okay now i'm going to do another one though for the car a little bit later where we're doing a conversion over to drop spindles and uh disc brake setup things like that so but this is just the basic because i have to put this beam together from scratch so i thought i might as well show it because some of the stuff can be a little pain in the butt like the torsion leaves and stuff so or torsion bars so to speak but uh it was nice meeting everybody at the car show in Ohio. I hope you enjoyed that video and let's get rolling. I have all my parts set up all over the place. I try to clean everything up. It always helps to clean the threads on all the bolts. So clean them up real nice so everything moves smooth. Try to do it to all of them. That way everything goes together nice and easy. Even wire wheel your washers up, okay? Clean your bearings. Mine are still like new, so I'm going to repack and use them. Clean your eccentrics up or your adjusters, whatever you want to call them. Make sure they're nice and smooth. And of course, you know, make everything nice. You know what I mean? It's just nicer to work with clean stuff like we're doing with our new front beam. Now, I didn't go to the extent of cleaning the torsion leaves all up because they just get grease back on them. I do have to wire brush that one lightly. It was sitting here and got a mild film of rust on it, but no big deal. First thing you want to do is you want to put your grease fittings in. Save the grease fittings from your original beam if possible. They have wonky threads in them now. I'm not really sure why, but... I always like to start them gently. Let me see if I got you close enough. And then put a wrench and just slowly put them in. Now don't over tighten them. I just put my finger on the end to hold it in place. You don't want to use a socket because it'll go up inside the socket and you'll never get it to bite. So. A little more there snug them up tight I'll go ahead and throw the rest in give me one second okay well this is the world we live in now I got one in there none one in there and none the threads are screwed up so I uh, looked online quickly and and they use this strange thread size, like 5 sixteenths or something on these. Why would you do that? It came from CIP1. Uh, I'm going to tap them at 8 by 1 and a quarter, 1.25, and I'm going to grab some new grease fittings. But we can go ahead and do what we're doing today, and I, come, I can come back and do that. So the parts we get today are much different. So, so we're going to go ahead and remove grub screws from the center because we need to see where the torsion leaves go here i don't need to take the locking nuts all the way off this will allow us to see if the torsion bars are lined up wow that's long when they go through Threads feel a little crummy. Oh my. No, they're okay. All right. All right, you're going to need to open your trunk. Not like that. And you're going to have to remove your gas tank, and here's why. Mine, obviously, is I'm bolted in. That's where the top of the beam bolts in. That's why. I gotta wipe that off. I was thinking about sanding this lightly because you have to scuff rust bullet down in order to paint over it. 
I was thinking of scuffing it and painting it the same color as the car that I'm doing. Okay, what we want to do first, I bought these from West Coast Metric because I like their anything rubber related. These go on top of the beam. They also fit the uh, rear shock tires, I believe, or rear body mount. I don't know where my brain's at. I'm tired today. I'm sure you can tell. But one thing about their rubber is it's very soft. So it's not brittle where it's going to break or hard to manage. And these will go on top. Just like that, where the beam goes up and gets mounted. As you can see here, that's how they fit. And they go on top of the beam, which will go up inside those holes. But I'll show you it, no problem. All right, so you can't see under here, but I'm putting my old rubbers on this. The new rubbers seem a little too thick, and these ones are still in good condition. So I don't know if they sent me the wrong ones. I got crap falling on my face. But I ain't got time to play with that right now. See if the bolts are lined up. Yes, I think they are. Okay, I'll bring you up here in one second. I'm just getting the bolts lined up so this don't fall on my stupid head. Remember, if you clean the threads up to your bolts, everything will go 100% smoother. There we go. Let me see something. Oh. Just trying to see what this looked like here. These seem, yep, they'll push in whenever I bolt it tight. Okay, let me get my wrench. Look up the torque specs to make sure you torque them properly. Now, some people like running caster shims on these, but I brought that up in another video. I won't get into all that again right now. Caster shims are a nice thing. But I won't get into that today. Because then I'll lead down 30 different directions. Just make sure you torque these properly. Lurk up your torque specs. Get a Bentley manual. Whatever it takes. Like I said, cleaning stuff up first, all your threads, even the female threads in the frame head, I got to tap, make sure you get the proper size, and I ran a tap through there to clean the threads up. So everything really went nicely. I'm not going to over torque because once the beam's complete, I'm going to pull it back down. I'm just doing this for entertainment, like I need that, uh, because I still got to do some body work up in here. So, okay, let's bolt it tight here. Let's check the top. Okay, and you can see how these evened out. So let me go ahead and get the cups, I call them. So you're going to set your rubber block in there like that. Make sure they are over the holes, which I'm sure you know that. We're going to set these on there. I call them the cups. You call them what you want. Okay. 
All right. And as you can see, I did clean my threads up. This is to hold the body down in the front. You want to do that. See how smooth they go in? It's when you clean the threads, it's nicer. I'll put this one in. Just getting it started. I'm not going to over tighten right now. Like I said, I'm pulling it back out to do body work, but I'm at least going to assemble it. And I did promise a few folks a video for this. And I think I'm going to, while I have it out, I'm going to take them brand new rubbers that should be in there and compress them a little. I think they're just a little too thick. We have our torsion leaves. I'm going to do the top first. Now, as you can see, the dimple, that's where your control arm will go on. When you put it in the top and I'm on the passenger side, you want it facing you. You'll see what I mean. So, there we go. Now, this here, this dimple, I'm on the passenger side, will be facing you. I hope that makes sense to you. It should. It should, right? I guess so. I want this nice and clean. Okay. Let's look in the center. Okay. Very awkward angle, but you're making sure the dimple is lined up with the hole. This is hard to hold and see the dimple lined up. Okay. And we're going to put the grub screw in. Now that you know the dimple is in the center of the hole, you're going to go ahead and put... I do a lot of grunting, huh? You're going to put your grub screw in. Here, let me do this. It's easier. Come on. There we go. All right. my ratchet snug it up because that's what keeps it from turning so you want it tight enough ah, where you're not going to have an issue you're going to lock your locking nuts down which I shouldn't have did the top one yet let me do something here I'm all over the place There we go and put our locking nut on not all of you may have locking nuts this came with them so I'll use them which is make sure that grub screw is tight because you want to make sure that don't come loose or your springs will spin around and you'll be all over the road so make sure you tighten them Come on, really? Okay. All right, time for the lower spring. Something I forgot to do. Because I'm human, just like all you. I wanted to put grease on this bearing. And I forgot. So I have to pull the top one out and do it. Not a big deal. It only take me a minute. I won't bore you on film with that. I mean, you're going to pump grease into it, but you still want to give it a little start, you know? Make it right. Let me go to the other side. Give me one second. You want to grease these up good. I'm not going to be able to pump grease in today because of the Zerk fitting deal, but that's okay. I'll make it right. Maybe we can do a video on tapping and installing the Zark fittings, grease fittings. I don't like how that is, but I see it'll fight with me in the end because it's not 
even. But that's okay. We will deal with it. All right, let's get the other one in. Here is our other one. Remember, you want this facing you. Come on. There we go. Yay. Okay. This one's going to give me trouble up here. I can already read its mind. Okay. Now let's do the Zark. Ooh, got Zark fitting on a mine. Let's do the screw on the bottom. Now make sure your little dimple's evened out, which mine is. I don't need to bring you up close again. And we're going to Remember, check that dimple. Make sure it's lined up with your hole. And then you're good to go. I'm trying to look at what I'm doing, but look through the camera to make sure you're in focus. Use a wrench on the bottom one since we can get to it. This is so it don't back out going down the road. Oh. Okay. We're done under here for now. So. I'm going to take, put them on the wrong way, put the new seal in. I also got them from West Coast Metric. Pretty sure I did. It's been a little while. I'm going to put some grease around the shaft on the spindle. Hopefully it doesn't cause us a bunch of aggravation because it usually does when I'm filming. That's how it works, unfortunately. Whoop. Get all the grease off my hands or I won't be able to hold anything. Now make sure here is your hole for your grub screw. You have your little divot in here. Divot, is that a word? Come on, baby. Where's that at? Let me see something here. Let's get our seal back in place. Okay, the divot. I'll put a piece of grease there. It's right there. Okay. I have a plastic dead blow. get my little light see if this is lined up almost I don't like the way that feels almost keep saying that all right let me see here okay Looks like we are lined up. Because what I'm going to do then is I'll put a bar through here and pry up. And it's time to put the spindle on. Or you want to take a look, see how that's lined up. Now you can put your screw in to keep it from moving. So take your screw. This is just so it don't slide off. <clears throat> These are always a pain to pull up, but it's okay. It's 
part of the game. I like them tight. You can look up your torque specs. Okay. Because we're going to have to pry that up to get it on a spindle. It's not fun. And make sure you put new seals on. You want them to seal so the grease just don't start pumping out all over the ground. So put new seals on. It's worth the trouble. So I'm trying to wiggle it around until it goes through the bearing. Come on. Well, that definitely ain't it. Just the grub screws that way. Come on, get in there. Oh, caca. I hate when this happens. And I knew it would, especially while filming. Yeah, that's sticking back. Why are you fighting with me so bad? There we go. I'm going to make sure this is lined up before I start smacking it. I don't want to hit it with a hammer. I grabbed right there. See the tension. Where my rag go? Jeez. All right, hopefully this goes right in now. There, it's on her now. Okay. Oh. Oh, it is 90 degrees in the garage. A little bit more. Just a hair more. All right, hair more. I know I keep saying that. And I went too far. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. I'll show you in a second. Got our bottom one on. Look inside of here and you will see it's slotted perfectly for the screw to go through. All right, let's get our screw ready. They seem like I'm moving and talking slow than normal I am. I just looked, it's actually 92 in the garage, so that's a little warm to say the least. Okay, let me back this off a little bit. Let 
tighten this up. As I said, look up your uh, torque settings. Oh my goodness. Okay. All right, there's that side. And like I said, this seems really tight to me, but I'm gonna have to use a big pry bar to get it up there. So that side's buttoned up, but we're getting ready to put the spindle on. I put this side together. I wasn't going to do the same thing twice because then you just fast forward through it or you get bored with it. So I did the other side. You already seen the first side. So let's get over and get the spindle put on. So now we are going to do our spindle on this side. Now everybody does them different. Do it which way you want. I actually connect the spindle to here, pry up. I have this jacked up and try to fit them together. Uh, you do have, let me check my mic. Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, here's your adjuster, okay? That fits inside the spindle. And that's what gets turned to move your wheel in and out, top and bottom. All right, so you're gonna wanna grease that what I like to do is smear some grease inside of here because you don't want that sticking. Or you can use anti-seize, whatever you want to use. I know I'm saying, okay, again, I'm trying to stop myself from doing it. It's a habit now. So I, you can just go like that if you want. Put that on. Oh. Let me lean up. Oh, no. I left the nut at the workbench. You believe that? Oh, crap. So you're going to put a little bit more grease in there. Can't hurt. Just want to make sure it spins easily. There we go. That should be fine. <clears throat> Slide that up like that. You're going to take a big washer. There's two different sizes on these, a big and a small. The big one goes up top, the small one goes down the bottom. Some new nuts came with the new ball joints. Let me spin that up. I gotta change positions here. I'll speed this up here. So I'll tighten this up more once I get them both together. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to have to, I'm going to leave that nut on there for a minute so nothing buggers the threads up. Uh, this will need pried up while this needs jacked up. So this can get a little tricky. Now, this is the way I do it. You may have a better way. If you do, then do it your way. These springs are really tensioned on this one. I can usually move them around a little bit myself, but these ones are tight. Uh... Okay, let me get set up here, and then I'll turn the camera back on. As you can see, I jacked up the lower control arm slightly. Now, I'm going to try to pry up and set the spindle onto the lower control arm. So I'll move the camera in closer for you. It's kind of hard to get a good angle on that, but let me try. It's always nice when an extra person's here because then they can move this and it'll seat onto here. But Heather's not home, so it's just me and my trusty pry bar. Hopefully that don't slip off. Whoop. Okay, don't want to do that yet. Let me jack it up a little more. It was kind of a little uneven. Let me see if I can move this a little. Jeez, I'm trying to angle it a little bit. 
they're new, so they're a little bit stiff. Don't ever hit your threads, but I think you know that. Okay. Oh. Let me see. I might be in front of you. I don't know. Whoop. I think I just picked the car up. Oh. Come on, baby, get on there. There we go. Oh, okay. So that worked. Let's get our bottom nut on. I'll bring you up close and walk you around it in a second. I'm going to keep the jack under it. Why I do this? Remember your washer. Remember, small washer on the bottom, large washer up the top. You'll see the difference. Okay, I'll tighten these up a little more shortly. Uh, keep this on here. I did it so I wouldn't bugger the threads up on a spindle. All right, let's go to the other side. I forgot in case you want to look at anything here. That's how everything goes. Your seals are seated real nice. Now, when we pump grease in there, I know you see grease now, but that's because I wiped it around. When we put grease in at the Zark fittings, it's going to come out here and then you'll know to stop. So, but everything looks nice. I just figured you'd want to see that. I'm not sure. This message is brought to you by Gatorade. Zero sugar, low on calories. I'm just kidding. It's hot and I'm getting weird today. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, remember again, you have two washers. A big thick one and a small thin one. The big one always goes up top on your factory ones anyhow, so... We're going to grease this up, or the adjuster, eccentric, whatever you want to call it. Because the guy that does a front end alignment is going to love you. Hopefully not too much and charge you more. But you want these greased because they turn inside of here. Just like that. That's where the adjustment comes in. So make sure you wire wheel these up real good and, you know, grease them. Okay, let's put our big washer on and our, our nut that we're dropping. Okay, I have the ratchet wrenches I bought. And, of course, it didn't have a 19 millimeter, and that was the one I really wanted. It goes up to 17. Oh, well, I'll have to buy one. Okay, I'll speed this up. Give me a second. Let me get my jack positioned here. Don't lose that washer. I was talking to myself, basically. I don't have... I used to have a little piece, a block of 4x4, and I can't find it. I don't know where it went. Okay. Let me squeeze around here. i got to figure out how to do this. Where I'm not blocking you. Try to put the bar in there. See if I can get this seated. Oh, where's Heather when I need her? 
she could have guided this in for me. But she's working, so can't complain. All right, hopefully that does it. Let's see. I need a longer bar. That's what I really need. Oh, oh come on, baby. Get up here. Oh. Come on, get on, get on, get on. Whew. That's painful. Very painful. Now, we got to find... Oh, there it is. Let me turn this. Don't forget your washer. I know I repeat myself a lot, and I... <laughs> I do feel bad about that, but sometimes if you're sipping your coffee or answering one of your kids or wife or boyfriend or husband and you miss it, then you'll catch me. Why aren't you going on? You'll catch me repeating myself eventually. I just don't want to see you do something wrong or miss a step. So don't forget your washer. Got both spindles on. Now it's time to put the backing plates on and blah, blah. You like that, huh? You like when I say blah, blah. As you can see, I have my crap together. <laughs> I already put the brake shoes, wheel cylinders, and springs on the backing plate, if you would like. I can do a separate video on brake installation. If you want, let me know. Put it in the comments. It doesn't take me long to pop this stuff apart and put it back together. So that's your call. I didn't want to bore you for most of you that know how to do that. So, all right, I'll shut up. So we are on the driver's side. And there is our backing plate. Isn't that nice? Ooh. Goes right like that. Okay. Now, again, make sure... You clean up all the threads. Wire wheel your bolts really nice. Make them brand new. It will make the job so much smoother. Even go and get a, even a cheap tap set. Uh, Harbor Freight or, you know, try to buy a good one if you can, though. I did buy a Harbor Freight one. I go through a lot of money in the garage, so I kind of had to. And I always re-chase, make sure you know the right pitch of the thread. I rechase threads so they're nice and clean again. It just makes makes life easier, you know? So you might want to do that. And this bolt don't want to start for me. Here it is. That was me. User error. Okay, let me get ratchet Wonder. before I put a gun on it just to make sure. Yep. Smooth. And leave this on. Trust me, so you don't bump your threads. If you bump your threads, you're going to be bummed out. Hold your ears. There we go. If you see this wobbling when I'm doing stuff, it's a snap-on extension. It gives you a little bit of angle if needed. Kind of cool, huh? Oh, my. At Milwaukee. Uh-oh. Okay, well, that Milwaukee, <laughs> it works pretty good. Okay, let me grab uh, everything else I need for this side. We are over at the bench. As you know, we got to pack some grease. We're going to put the drums on and torque them properly. I'm going to pack these by hand. They do sell... I'll see if I can find it. And you put this in there, pushed on, and the grease comes up through the bearings. But I pretty much just do them by hand. I've always done them that way. So why change now? You want to you get it up inside of here. 
okay? So you want to go like that with the grease to get it up in. And you'll see it. You'll see it coming out the bearings, needle bearings, whatever you want to call them. Because they're definitely not ball bearings. Okay, let me speed this up a minute. Now make sure, and you already know this, but I'm going to say it anyhow, you get any grease in that drum, make sure you clean it out, use some brake clean or something. I only got some right here, not a big deal. Wipe this off real pretty. And they're cheap. Buy yourself a new set of seals for the back. Oh, my rubber mallet. I'm going to use my plastic hammer. Okay. New bearings, new seals. Although the bearings were used, they had a whopping 150 mile on them. And yes, it's the same races, so knock it off. Okay, we're going to move down to the car. Well, here, what I will do is grease up the outer bearing. So I'll speed this up real quick. That way this is done. Time to go over to the car. Now what we are going to do... We already put our inner bearing on with our seal. I'm going to put some grease around here. And don't get it on your brake shoes, but I, I know you know these things. It just bothers me if I don't say something. I can't seem to keep the grease back here. There we go. I probably put too much on, but it's okay. I did a video on that, so. Now, I'm going to put... Uh, probably can't see this, sorry. I'm putting a little bit of grease in the outer race. Just so it's already in there, even though I already greased the bearing. Can't hurt. All right, and our greased up bearing. Now you want to make sure. Wipe my hands off. Use this washer. See the little lip on it or the ridge, and then there's a slot there. Okay, even close enough. Did you see that where the slot goes in there? I'm sure you did. Okay, now we are on the driver's side of the car. This goes on. Let me get it started. I can't chew gum and walk. I think it's just so hot in here. It reached 94. Uh, you know how we always say lefty loosey, righty tighty. If you know you guys and ladies remember that, this is the opposite on the driver's side. It's righty, lo righty loosey, lefty tighty. Did I say that right? How about this? Go counterclockwise, and it'll tighten it. <laughs> okay. Now we want to seat the bearing. Okay. Now. We're not going to go crazy, are we? You're not going to go uh, and tighten it. You know that grunt noise you do? Go like that a little. Just seat it a little bit. That's all you got to do. I'm not done yet, so hold on. All right. I'm going to re-loosen it a little. I could fill it. Give. Right like that. There we go. I'm weird about how I do them. I like to seat them, but if you have them seated too tight, well, then you're going to have an issue. So, I could see it spinning really nice in there, too. Okay, and I forgot my Allen head. This is a 6 millimeter Allen head. 
we are going to tighten it up. That turns normal, righty tighty. You want this tight, now don't go nuts, you'll strip it. But you want that tight so it can't spin up. And of course, if you want your cap on, make sure you put the one with the hole in it on the driver's side. Because that's where the speedometer cable comes through. Oh, you can tell these ball joints are new. It's going to have to loosen up. This ain't on all the way, and that's okay because I got to pull it to pull this back apart. But that's it for that. Pulled apart. I probably should do a brake shoe video. I don't know if you just want to see that. There's so many out there. If you want to see it, let me know. I'll, I'll do brake, brake shoes installation. So, okay, I'm going to put the other side together and then we'll be closing up. But we're going to go over a few nuts and bolts. I want to explain something. So, be right back. All right. I'm going to slap this side together really fast. And since you already seen the other side, and there's a few things I'll point out along the way, but I'm going to time lapse this side. What that means is I'm going to speed it up starting now. I slowed the film down a second to show you something. On the driver's side, you had to turn counterclockwise to tighten it. This on here is normal, what you're used to. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. So this will go on normal. Whatever normal is, you know what I mean. You're turning it clockwise to tighten it. So it's different than the other side. So don't mix them up. Okay. I like doing this, tightening and loosening up a little bit to seat them. Now remember, your brakes are de-adjusted right now. So, nice and smooth. Well, it should be. But you're just seating them. You're not cranking them tight because then you crush the bearings and that's not what you want. I do mine weird compared to other people. I was trying to get it off. I wasn't cranking it. Okay, then we take our six millimeter and we tighten it up so it doesn't come flying off and hit somebody in the head going down the road. Then you put your cap on. These don't want to fit these good off to check it out. Uh, and then that's it. So we're going to go over a couple of things real quick here. I think that's important. I think so anyhow. You may not. So we are all done there. Now Here's something that you do need to know, and most of you probably do know. If you want to pull this whole assembly off, okay, you don't need to pull the drums and the spindles and the control arms and the torsion leaves. That was a lot to say. You would just basically pull your tank, disconnect your brake lines going to it, take that bolt off and that bolt off, and the four bolts holding the front of the beam up. That's basically what you do to get it off the vehicle. You know, you don't have to take everything off. So that was your complete beam assembly. Front beam, that's ball joint. There's such a thing as kingpin, but you already know that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get back on them guide rail seals. Uh, I gotta figure out how to bend them. They're really thick. So it isn't gonna be fun to bend them down and around and around the cow to the windshield, uh, but we'll get it done. That's, I'm going to start on that tomorrow. It'll be next week's video. I'm going to probably go over to disc drop spindles 
So I'll be doing the conversion while this is together. I think that's awesome. So I'll show disc brake conversion, drop spindles, blah, blah. So that'll be cool to do. Uh, if you want to see a brake shoe assembly, let me know. I'm sure all of you know how, but if one of you don't know how, it's okay. I didn't know how at one time either. So uh, I'm going to try to get on uh, possibly tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern, if possible. I'll put it in the community tab and uh, try to get on tonight for live chat for change. So I hope everybody had a really great day. Everybody be happy, be nice. Mend ways with people. Be together. Everybody unite. I'll see you soon.